The romantic era of music saw Beethoven leading the way with composers creating music that was grand, expressive, and with much greater range of external influences. They built on the conventions from previous music periods, but began to challenge them as they sought to free themselves from the restrictive ways of the preceding classical period. We're going to get into the key romantic composers, some of their most important works, and at how things develop stylistically during the era. We'll also learn about the emergence of instrumental virtuosos, Wagner's innovations in the world of opera, and about various musical forms. I also have a playlist of romantic music, link below that you can check out from Spotify. There are six major eras that make up the periods of Western classical music. The romantic period lasted from 1800 to 1910 AD and is the fifth of the main eras. There's medieval, renaissance, baroque, classical, romantic, and the contemporary era. All the other videos are linked below and subscribe and click the bell to make sure you get all of them and get notified. As with most of the classical music eras, there is a crossover between the Romantic era and the preceding classical era. The transition was bridged by Ludwig van Beethoven with his music spanning both periods. He wrote ambitious works expanding upon the previously strict symphonic rules established by the likes of Mozart and Haydn with his later pieces anticipating Romanticism. He worked on a grander scale with a material that was much more expressive and emotive, two of the defining features of Romantic music. Another innovation was the inclusion of programmatic content. This is instrumental music that attempts to suggest an extra musical narrative. Composers now began to take inspiration from nature, literature, ancient legends, national identity, and other non-musical stimuli. Beethoven's Symphony No. 6 exemplifies this. Known as the Pastoral Symphony, it evokes rural life with imitation bird calls. As music became more emotive, composers were able to make their music more overtly autobiographical and could attempt to express emotions and feelings such as grief, romantic love, and tragedy. Things also become more complex on a technical level with increasingly complex chord sequences and longer and less predictable phrases and melodies. Pieces might now cadence into unexpected key centers, for example. The extremes of the dynamic range were utilized from pianissimo to fortissimo, and the same approach was applied to tonal range with the lowest and highest available notes of each given instrument. Some music now made use of rubato passages in free rhythmic time, again contributing to more expressive sound. Composers also began writing nationalistic music which glorified their home country, sometimes against a perceived oppressor for the first time. Jean Sibelius's tone poem Finlandia has been interpreted as a protest at censorship in Finland by the Russian Empire, but Bedrich Smetana's music is associated with the push for Czech independence. Meanwhile, some of Frédéric Chopin's music celebrated the traditional folk music of his native Poland. While many types of composition that weren't popular in the classical period continued to be written, a number of new musical forms developed. A tone poem is a single movement orchestral work around a particular theme. Russian composer Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, who also composed a number of important ballets, wrote Romeo and Juliet, which is based on William Shakespeare's play of the same name. Other new forms of types of composition, some of which have implied character or mood, included Lida, German language songs, often created by setting poetry poetry to music, and organized in song cycles. Franz Schubert, a transitional composer who straddled the classical and romantic eras, similarly to Beethoven, pioneered Lide. Nocturne, a composition evocative of the nighttime, Chopin wrote some beautiful nocturnes for piano. Arabesque, composed by Tchaikovsky, Robert Schumann, and others, this was a type of piece inspired by Arabic culture and architecture in particular. Rhapsody, a single movement work with a deliberate sense of spontaneity, as if it were improvised. Concert Overture, a single movement orchestral work often based upon a literary program. The Romantic period is considered a golden age of opera and many of the works that are performed most frequently today were written in the 19th century. The Italian bel canto, literally meaning beautiful singing, movement of the early Romantic era, features ornate and intricate vocal melodies requiring superb technique from the soloist and is exemplified in Gioacchino Rossini's operas such as The Barber of Seville. Later, Giuseppe Verdi's operas like Rigoletto makes use of a more forceful, direct style with a focus on dramatic storytelling and were associated with Italian nationalism. German composer Richard Wagner built 
upon the innovations of Karl Maria von Weber, who helped establish a uniquely German style of romantic opera to push the genre forward into new territory. He was also very inspired by Beethoven, by the way. He made use of much more adventurous harmony, increasing chromaticism, and pioneered the use of leitmotifs, musical phrases that represent specific characters. Influencing the likes of Richard Strauss and Puccini, his large-scale epic works were a far cry from the neat and elegant operas that Mozart wrote in the classical period. Wagner's famous Ride of the Valkyries appears in his Der Ring des Nibelungen. This cycle of operas typically takes place over four nights with a total playing time of around 15 hours. The Romantic era also saw the emergence of stunning virtuoso performers who were widely lauded for their instrumental skills and a number of composers now increasingly appeared in the public eye to play their own music. Franz Liszt and Frédéric Chopin were both composers and brilliant pianists, while Niccolo Paganini was one of the most celebrated violinists of his day. As well as significantly influencing modern violin technique, he wrote a number of pieces that are now a part of standard violin repertoire. Johannes Brahms, an extremely important composer of chamber and symphonic works, was also a virtuoso pianist who often premiered his own pieces. Anne de Pèlerinage is one of Liszt's most acclaimed works for solo piano. The Romantic Orchestra got bigger in keeping with the grander, more expressive music that was being written and to allow for a broader tonal palette, particularly high or low-pitched instruments like piccolo, contrabassoon, and bass clarinet now made a guest appearance in pieces to create certain desired effects or moods as did instruments from the much expanded percussion section. Celeste, which is famously used in Tchaikovsky's Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, xylophones, triangles, or bass drums, for example. The string section retained the same four instruments, violin, viola, cello, and double bass, but the number of players of each instrument increased. The Industrial Revolution meant that there were more great improvements to the mechanical keys and valves used on most woodwinds and brass instruments, so they became much closer to the ones we see today. The piano, now by far the most popular instrument, expanded in size and ranged from 5 to 8 octaves. Up until this point, most composers had made a living by working under the patronage of aristocracy, thus writing music that would only be heard by a relatively small audience or as employees of religious institutions. However, a big growth in the middle class during this period made it possible for them to write music to be performed in big concerts and festivals, which would be heard by a much wider range of people. This was in keeping in with the emergence of a new perception of musicians as artists rather than craftsmen. Give this a like to help more people learn about classical music history. Subscribe and click the bell to never miss a post, and check out some more about your favorite classical composers linked below.